วัสดีค่ะ Good evening and welcome to Thai PBS World Tonight. I'm Nan b u n a I'm Tulip Nag s o m p o p l a And unfortunately, we recorded one more death today, and that raised the COVID-19 death toll to 91. The latest fatality was a diabetic 60-year-old man. With the last stage lung cancer, living in Bangkok, he took a COVID-19 test on March 15th and was admitted to hospital that same evening. His condition deteriorated until his death three days later. 73 new COVID-19 infections have also been recorded today. 66 of them were local transmissions, mostly found through proactive screening, and seven cases from abroad. The new cases today raised the cumulative number of infections to 27,876. 65 new recoveries have also been recorded today, while 1,122 patients are still receiving treatment. The CCSA also announced that an additional 297 illegal immigrants from Myanmar, Vietnam and Cambodia currently being held in Bangkok immigration detention centers in b a n k i n and s o n p l u have been found to be infected with COVID-19 in the latest round of proactive screening by health officials. The CCSA's assistant spokesperson, Dr. a p i s a m a i s i Rangsan, explained that due to the sharp increase in infections among the illegal immigrants, on top of the 98 cases found by March 20th, she said that the Immigration Bureau has decided to stop admitting new detainees to the two centers and will isolate asymptomatic cases. Regarding the new cluster in Samutprakan province, Dr. p i s m a i said that 17 migrant workers at a workers camp have been found to be infected when proactive screening was started following the discovery of the first case. That patient is a migrant worker who tested positive in Ayutthaya province on March 13th, underwent a second test in Samutprakan two days later, and, and was admitted to hospital for treatment. Subsequent proactive screening of over 600 workers at a workers' camp in s o k u m w i t s o i 117 showed positive results for 16 workers. Another 400 migrant workers at another camp in s o i s o k u m w i t 107 were also screened but cleared of any infections. The disease control department later reported that the two camps were crowded and the workers shared dormitory accommodation, with some defying company regulations by venturing out to high-risk areas or partying. Meanwhile, Police General s u w a t d a n g y o t s o k the national police chief, announced the setting up of a field hospital on the grounds of the police club on w i p a w a d i Rangsit to accommodate the 297 infected illegal immigrants held at Bangkin and s u n p l u immigration detention centers. The infected are among 1,600 illegal immigrants from Myanmar, Vietnam and Cambodia who are awaiting deportation. Very close to here. Yes, very close because <laughs> very, very that's close. a large group mm. we're seeing here that have been infected with the virus. Now talking about the new hotspot, I'm not sure we can call it new because uh, Bang Kun Tien actually has been hotspot like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, and then the spread kind of the number kind of slowed down a little bit, but now it's coming back. The increased COVID-19 testing of factory workers in Bangkok Tien District after 28 people found to be infected. The Bangkok Metropolitan Administration of BMA has stepped up proactive screening of the factory workers in Bangkok Tien. Deputy Permanent Secretary of City Administration Chawin Sirinak. said that the health officials immediately launched an investigation after two workers who were admitted for treatment at Rajapipat Hospital tested positive. Health officials went to a factory in Ramatu area of Bang Kun Tien where the two are employed and identified 37 workers as being at high risk, 28 of whom tested positive without symptoms. All the asymptomatic cases were placed under quarantine for observation and 176 other workers considered to be at low risk were tested and their results pending. c h o w i n also said that health investigators have been trying to trace people who were in close contact with the high-risk group of workers, especially those in nearby factories or sharing dormitories. Now, 
another place in Bangka district of Bangkok. He said that a total of 5,425 people at high risk have been inoculated since March 17 in an attempt to prevent the market cluster from spreading out of control. On the last day of the mass inoculation on Sunday, he said that 1,550 were given the vaccine. 17 could not be inoculated because their health condition was considered unsuitable. Eight recipients of the vaccine suffered mild dizziness but recovered after about 30 minutes. So about AstraZeneca, the latest study from United States say that, uh, said that it is actually 79% uh, effective. We noted though that U.S. hasn't approved the use of AstraZeneca yet. So uh, they are still ongoing on the like a final stage of the study in that country while it has been launched in so many countries including Thailand. And it wouldn't work as well if it hasn't been completed two vaccines. Right. And now moving on, the criminal court this morning held an inquiry into a letter of complaint written by Anon Nampa, one of the remanded Rasadon leaders expressing concern over the safety of his two colleagues in Bangkok remand prison. In the letter, which was posted on social media on March 16th, Anon claims that on four occasions in the middle of the night on March 15th, prison officers tried to bundle his two cellmates, namely Panupong Jatnog and Jatupat Bun Patraraksa, out of their cell, supposedly for COVID-19 screening. But he and the other detained Rasadol leaders resisted because they thought the officers' actions were suspicious. Appearing at the inquiry are Anon Panupong Jatupat and their lawyer Krisadang Nutarat of the Thai Lawyers for Human Rights. Krisadang told the media that the Deputy Director General of the Corrections Department, accompanied by some of his officials, are also present at the session to defend the department against Anon's allegations. They brought with them video footage from the prison cell recorded on March 15th and the following morning. A separate inquiry is scheduled this afternoon for the criminal court to consider the conduct of another Rasadon core leader being held on remand, that is Parit Tiwarak or Penguin, in the courtroom on March 15th to decide whether it amounts to contempt of court. Parit allegedly climbed onto a courtroom chair and flashed the three-finger salute to protest against the court's denial of his bail request, causing a brief commotion during which a drink bottle was thrown by one of those in the courtroom. Krisadan admitted that he was concerned about this incident and would like to hear full details from the court. Contempt of court is subject to a maximum jail term of six months and or a fine of 500 baht. Okay, so uh, how many attempts there has been trying to bail them out? I think several times. Well, already. several times, I would say, yeah. and most of the attempts have failed. And the court has been giving the same reason. They're afraid that if all these uh, protest leaders go out, they will commit the same kind of act. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on to the World Happiness Report. Thailand ranked 48 in the latest World Happiness Report. Of course, 48 is not super high, but still better than another like 40, 47 countries. So the number one, you guess it, has been the same for many years, Finland. Finland is number one, followed by Iceland and then Denmark. So out of the 95 countries the ter and territory survey, the bottom rank, the lowest rank, of the um, World Happiness Report is Zimbabwe, and then Jordan, and then Tanzania. Tanzania, sorry. The report calculates the ranking based on several factors, including gross domestic product and life expectancy, using data from Gallup World Poll as the primary source. They also use data from around 1,000 individual responses to surveys from each country or territory. This year, they collect a broader variety of data to measure the impact of COVID-19. If you read the report, they claim that 1,000 individuals is well uh, weighed among the different kind of uh, demographic. The report stated that there are a small number of places from which the data arrived too late. 
for inclusion in this report, while many switched from face-to-face -to, -face to phone interviews. The Ninth World Happiness Report states that its purpose remains to measure and use subjective well-being to track and explain the quality of life all over the world. The report claims to use responses at the individual level to investigate how the pandemic has affected the happiness of different population subgroups. Researchers concluded that the pandemic has led to increases in negative psychological outcomes such as depression and anxiety for a large portion of the global population. These effects are worse in younger age groups and women ethnic minorities, and those with pre-existing mental health problems, thus reinforcing the presence of many pre-existing mental health inequalities. There is still much uncertainty, however, about how the full mental health consequences of COVID-19 will play out. In summary, the report states that although there were significant increases in average sadness and worry over Overall, life evaluations and happiness rankings were surprisingly stable. The top countries before the pandemic remained the top countries in 2020, so there is little change in overall rankings. The report says that the same six factors which report well-being, namely income, health, someone in to count on, freedom, generosity and trust, continue to do so in almost exactly the same way as in previous years. Well, although the ranking for Thailand is not high, but if you really look at the scores, it seems like we sort of like went like this. Oh, it's not. Well, like, they said that really it's happened all over the world, right? Because yeah. at least COVID-19 affected everyone. But when you compare countries to country, even though the score goes down, but from country to country, it's still um, kind of stable, like not changing in rank. Yeah, but it's like I have 10 baht today and you have 9 Yeah, and then yesterday I have 9 and you have 8 so it's still something yeah, like that, right? Something like that but if you really look at the scores it, it hasn't really improved that much. Yeah, but uh, one interesting thing is the psychological evaluation that they try to portray here especially when COVID-19 kind of show the problem of inequality. Usually we think about the yeah. uh, economy, life standard, but a lot of time when we talk about equality, people forget to talk about the mental health. Exactly, and if we have to guess why people in Thailand are not so happy, I won't judge, but if we have to guess would be the economy, and the political situation and like you just said the inequality that is happening whether it's the gap be between the access to education to healthcare, and all these things that would probably be why thailand is not so happy compared to countries like in finland or even like in singapore because singapore is actually one of the top countries in Asian countries that have the highest score here. I think it's kind of an indicator if you ask them what is their most unhappy about in that country. Um, I think in this research, so many years in a row, Singaporeans will say that trust, uh, that mass transportation, that yeah. public transportation, and I was just like, if you come to Thailand, you will feel totally happy with what you really? have in Singapore. <laughs> or I have a Finnish friend that will just talk about some kind of uh, products code for European. <laughs> and I, it, it's like, it's first world problem. I'm, I don't want to use that word, but uh, it's, it's something totally different from here. I mean, everybody has something to not happy about, yeah. I would say. Yeah, everything, like for every single country, there are some of the things that they would complain about. Thailand would complain one thing, but other countries would have a totally different story here. I was trying to, I was trying to comb through the report to say, is there any specification on how, let's say, Thai people, which one they're not happy with the most, but in the report, I couldn't really I mean, unless I'm really going to read 212 pages of it, but as <laughs> I come through the report, I don't see anything like that. Yes, and we just mentioned COVID-19. It has put a huge toll on the, the farmers and all these people. And 
especially on mango orchard owners in Thailand's northern province of Pitsanulog are seeking help from the provincial administration to promote the sale of their sweet fruit, particularly the golden barracuda mangoes locally known as Nandok Mai. They complain that because of the COVID-19 pandemic, their mangoes are not being exported due to fewer buyers and their prices have plunged to between 10 and 20 baht per kilogram depending on their size. For other varieties, they say that the prices range from 2 to 5 baht per kilogram, which do not cover their investment, adding that they have to pay the mango pickers at least 300 baht a day. Mrs. Ubonrat Sitrakun, a provincial commerce official, said that she has formed a sales promotion team comprising representatives of the public and private sectors to help their orchard owners sell their mangoes online. Meanwhile, the province's governor is seeking help from other provincial governors to promote the sale of Pisanolog mangoes. And Pisanolog is a major producer of golden barracuda. Barracuda mangoes. <laughs> I'm just familiar with the Thai name or Nam Dok Mai. It's a very popular type of mangoes because when we think of a very popular Thai dessert, which is called uh, what is it, Kao Niam Right. We would usually mango with sticky rice. Yep, mango with sticky rice. We would usually use the Nam Dok Mai mangoes, right. or in English we call it golden barracuda mangoes. It sounds like a fish barracuda. <laughs> no, no, there is a fish there called There is a barracuda. fish called <laughs> Yes, but there, yeah, Nam Dok Mai or this golden, is it called golden barracuda? Yeah, well, it, on the description is like, when we think of Nam Dok Mai mangoes or barracuda mangoes, it's sort of golden in color, right. that sort of thing, but the flavor is really sweet. And when you eat it with sticky rice and some coconut, coconut sauce or all and these. And it smells really nice too. Yes. It's not too strong. I mean, some kind of mango will smell very strong. You can totally tell that it's sweet from far away. But now I'm not my, it's kind of mild in, in the aroma. I'm a big fan of mangoes myself, so Nam Tok Mai would be one of my biggest options if I have to buy mangoes. And other than that, there are other types as well, like Momo uh, Okrong, Momo Red, and all these things. But Nam Tok Mai would be best if you want some sort of sweetness. Oh, if you want really sweet, Okrong will be the sweetest one. Oh, Okrong sweeter. But uh, the seed is pretty big, so the meat itself is not that much for each one of them, so it's not that popular. Right. And now it's time for Empowering Thai Women, where we connect you with amazing Thai women who are successful and influential in or in their own ways. And the next guest for, for today is Kun Pathori Raksawong, who is a news anchor, MC, and she has been the role model for many Thais who aspire to improve their English. She has also been praised for her professionalism during the ASEAN Summit back in 2019. But what does it really take? to become who she is now, so let's check it out. Swadika, Your Majesty, Your Excellencies, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to the opening ceremony of the 34th ASEAN Summit. My name is Pachyori Raksa Wong and it is an honor for me to be here as your master of ceremonies. Well, that was one of like the pinnacles of my career, I think, to be emceeing before the 10 plus leaders of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. I remember Mr. Antonio Guterres was also there. It was an amazing amazing experience and especially because I have always, always wanted to be a diplomat and represent my country. Also, I think the opportunity to shake Do An San Suu Kyi's hand and take a selfie with her, that was also a very surreal moment. Meet Pathori Raksawong, a professional English-speaking MC, a news anchor, radio host, lecturer and a mother of two who took the spotlight during the 34th ASEAN Summit, which was held in Bangkok back in 2019. But what was it really like to take the stage in front of ASEAN leaders? 
So I wasn't so nervous. I was just very fixated on, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna perfect this. There's not gonna be any dead air. It's gonna be smooth. I'm not gonna trip over my words. And I just shut everything out. They're world leaders. Yes, they are rich, they're powerful. But at the end of the day, they have their grandchildren sit on their laps and they, you know, they're just people. So why do we need to fear them? And that's what calms me down. And to be calm and to be in control of the situation is very, very vital. With more than 20 years of experience, along with her unique accent and personality, Pasari has been considered as a role model for many Thais who aspire to become an MC and most importantly, to improve their English. She started off her career as a children's TV show host, which became a starting point for her to take on bigger opportunities, such as emceeing, news reading, and even teaching. So I consider it a blessing that I am able to take on all these different roles and wear different hats, you know? So how do I cope or juggle them all? I just balance it, and then I just make sure that I plan everything out. Although she is widely respected for her role, this is not the pathway she ever thought of doing. I was a very timid, very shy girl, young teen growing up. I hated speaking in front of an audience. I just dreaded like English classes whereby the teacher will give us an assignment. We'd have to think of a topic and speak in front of the class, right? And I would always want to be the last person or I'd always look at the watch and hopefully the time will fly by real quick so that it wouldn't be my turn yet. But no matter what opportunity she was given at the time, saying yes was always the answer, either with excitement or skepticism. Such opportunities helped her gain confidence over time as her main philosophy in life is to never let a day go by without learning something new. And it's like when an opportunity comes knocking on your door, do not ignore it. Whatever opportunity it is, you think you can't do it, you think it's not your cup of tea, just give it a go, okay? And I've been very, very lucky that from my perspective, I may have thought that I failed, but then there were people out there who would say, okay, she has potential, let's give her another chance, and the chances came. And obviously, each chance you take, you're only going to get better, and I promise you that. Oh yes, you would think women are not capable of handling like the top position, being a leader, because they're probably going to cry about everything. Hey, come on. Okay, the world has changed. It's absolute equality now. Women and men are equally as capable in, in every way. So many strong intellectual women out there we've seen. Uh, most recently, the World Trade Organization is just seeing uh, its first female director. And who's one of the most strongest leaders in the EU? Is it not Angela Merkel? There's just so many examples out there. And, and I think we're very lucky to be in this generation because I think the world is, is, very, is much more aware that women are so competent, so capable, and I want to champion that cause. I think it's to give them a voice and give them more opportunities and having them have the freedom to do what they want to do for them to meet their aims and goals and become the person who they truly want to be. I mean, we all have our choices, but sometimes we feel like we have our limitations. It could be tradition, it could be what your parents are telling you that you should be. That's not being empowered. I would like to say that you all have a voice, you all have a heart, you all have your thoughts, and I think that voice that's telling you to do this, do that, follow it, listen to it, and, and be who you want to be. And don't let anybody get you down. And you should also remain positive and send out those positive vibes to everybody. And I think that should feed you in going towards your dreams. I like the idea of sending out positive vibes. 
it's yep. really important. I mean, if you're standing or sit next to the person that always frustrated and angry, you just feel frustrated too, right? Exactly, because like I've met her in person so many times, and what you can feel from from k u m p a t o r i or widely known as k u p i e is that. She brings out positivity, and she always encourages people around her because she's a teacher, she's a lecturer herself, and you learn a lot from her. And one of the things that I've, I've learned from her is that if you're positive, the whole atmosphere will be positive as well, and that will bring you a lot of encouragement, and you have some sort of motivation to be better every day, as opposed to other people who. Look down on you, who belittle your dreams and all these things. I'm pretty sure nobody wants to be next to that kind of person. Mm. Well, keep sending out positive vibes. I will try to send out positive vibes. Yes, vibe. so. positive vibes <laughs> is actually a good way right. to make the atmosphere look even better because. We have to admit that the world is full of tensions and all these things, and positivity doesn't need to come from anybody. It could start from me. It could start from you. It's just if you start from yourself, it's that's just a good start. Yes. Okay, that's all the news we have in this edition of Thai PBS World tonight. If you want to read about the interview that you just watched, you can go to our website www.thaipbsworld.com. Or if you want to learn about other news in ASEAN, especially what's happening in Myanmar, we have Myanmar report, and we have many other things that are happening in Thailand to report to you. So check our website, our YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and also TikTok and Instagram. And that wraps up tonight's edition of Thai PBS World Tonight. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow. Sweaty Ka.